Because we love bitches! Coming soon to this theater. people it's your boy brian back for another uh episode of the horror movie club what do we do in the horror movie club figure it out bitches we watch horror movies uh we always try to make sure it's a movie that's not behind a paywall so what that means is when we announce the show we post that it's coming in advance you can go click on a link that's in the description that will take you to a free print of the movie that you can watch it's totally uncensored but also if you're just joining us now and you've never seen uh tonight's movie which is an american werewolf in london first of all if if you haven't seen Amer an american werewolf in london what the fuck is wrong with you yeah, but sure. you're fucked yeah no you're a little fucked up you're a little fucked up right I, i'm not just keeping it real but you can rectify that shit by going down in, into the description and clicking on a link. It will take you to a free, completely uncensored uh, version of the movie. Now, uh, let me let me bring on uh, my bu my buddies who are hanging out. First of all, my co-host, your boy, Matt boy, Matt Burke. What is going on, what up, dude? <laughs> What's going on, man? Good to see you, man. You too, man. I can't wait to talk about fucking an American world from London. Oh hell yeah, man! I got some cool fucking picks too. Like, um, Fuck yeah. Can we like, see the uh, you know, art? movie posters, fan art. Yeah, shit. Like, you know, I always love that. I always, I, I, always, I always love that shit. And then, of course, there's Pops Van Zandt. What's going on, man? What's up? What's up? What's the not? show is brought to you by all kinds of cool things. Huh? Farms, fun by comic. No, I'm kidding. I just like product placement. <laughs> That's the, that's not the um that's not the coffee mug slash bong from um uh, Cabin, in the woods. Cabin in the Woods, is it? Bong not yet. Mug. Not yet. Isn't that amazing that that thing actually worked? It actually exists. Dude, I love that. <laughs> yes, yes, it worked. It worked <laughs> it as had to be a one coffee of the best mug and crafts. as a bong. They it's actually spent like thousands of on. dollars to have that fucking thing made. One of the best movie props. Ever. Ever. Right? I, I know. Have that, that was, shit on eBay. I thought it was computer it graphics. <laughs> you see it. And then, of course, there's my boy, your boy, and that's Preston S. Of What's guy. going on, brother? If you, if you haven't seen American Werewolf in London, you don't live on this planet. The fuck? <laughs> right. There's something a little fucked up about you. I think Shadow Hawk about you. Oh, shit. You know, if you've been in, like, a, like you know, uh, health, if you were being held captive by, like, a religious cult or something like that, I understand, right? I knew somebody that yeah, grew like up you in missed a the cult. comment. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly, right? Like I knew somebody that, that was that was that was in my group that that was uh, you know had left a cult, and she didn't never she had never seen a Star Wars movie. She didn't know who James Bond was. Like all, like was all it the Catholic people. Church? She left. I was going to say no, no, no. It had to be like a word of faith uh, thing. Uh, uh, Orthodox Jews. Mm. <laughs> Same. Yes, and they are a cult because they don't let you leave. And to me, that's that the like, like, how do you define a cult? Do they do they let you out? And in that yeah, one, nowhere they don't. But she skipped are out, of it, and okay, so it was well, like the whole world. Got you whole for three world. minutes of playtime. <laughs> and of course, oh, there's our boy there. Dave. What's going on, Dave? Hey, uh, I'm good. I'm uh, just a. Uh, Figure fresh out of the shower, I'm bath robing it, so I figured I'd just <laughs> sexy, yeah, sexy. 
Ow! Sex sex thing. Bow wow. <laughs> oh man, uh, there is some fucking cool ass. I mean, I know it's the horror movie club, but I don't want to scare anybody. Well, you, know, I'll, well, dude, <laughs> you don't, you won't see me on camera wearing like mesh t-shirts, right? Yeah. Like that, I, would, I would never do that. I would never do that to people. I Shadow would Hawk, Shadowback Bricker. Some people are in that. Yeah, what's thing, up, Shadowhawk? What's up? Is that Hex? I see too. And um, Heck, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear that. Not based on being embarrassed but based on who i might attract <laughs> that's what would scare me right right don't, don't want to scare attract the ladies. wrong people <laughs> no no way you back don't. in the beginning no, I, don't, I, I, I don't want to attract, the, I don't want to attract the wrong ones right. sim was here first he was the first guy in the chat first first yes. Yes. shadow hot was what right up, on ink slayers right in on. the house Man, that's so good to be an ink slayer. Well, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you. I gotta get one of those beanies because it's fucking cold as a bitch out here in New York right now. Oh, Jesus, is it really? Man. It's, yeah, because oh, I'm man. a little bit. It's, it's cold as a bitch everywhere, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like I used to be like further south, and now I'm like yeah. not really upstate New York. I'm still in the Hudson Valley, but it's still upstate-ish. Yeah, and yeah. like for instance, it hasn't rained. It, has, it didn't snow for two years straight in uh, in New York City. Oh, now it is right. <laughs> it's getting cold. Now it is, but still, two years without snow. That ain't I right. Been, I, been, I got sick on like Sunday, man. I'm fucking finally feeling better. I just been like trying to go light on the medicine and just pushing and pushing. Isn't it funny how so many people? Because I, I I was sick after Christmas. Um, sick. I, yeah, I missed yeah. I missed one of, going one of the horror clubs. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. The funny Good. thing is, is isn't it great to have it like the old times where everybody around you was getting sick, but they didn't give it a fancy name in a marketing campaign? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just the there's something there. going around. Yeah, that's all it was. Yep, yep. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's all. That's you know, that's that's always been the case. It's just always like you know, flu season and shit, shit like that. Uh, a, l- a little bit of sad news. The um, actor who played the creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, Riku Browning, uh, recently passed away. But he was like 93 years old, right? That sucks, but it's like, damn. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I want to be like 150 years old. Like, I'm going to be 150 years old. You know, I'm, Maybe. I'm, I'm going to live long. I'm going to live long. I'm, I'm telling my body that. I'm telling my body that. You know what I mean? You got to tell I it. just don't want to be 150 years you know, old and be try, like a mummy. Yeah. I want to live like 300 years. That what, I I do, 300 years is a solid number. I want to be what like. What I do, Matt, is uh, you, you wear that Bluetooth sleep mask, and you can and you can listen to suggestion while you're for your mm-hmm. eight hours, however much you get. That you will live that long, like you know how not, uh, dude, Christopher Reeve not aging like they used to. Because they really like how Christopher see, Reeve, how Christopher yeah. Reeve could go back in time just based on suggestion and hang with Jane Seymour. Yes. Yes, like, hold my beer. I'll be right back. Within the next twenty yes. years, you'll be you'll be able to be uploaded to the web anyway, so it's not gonna. Yeah, but that right? won't be you. That will be <laughs> yeah, yeah. another yeah, totally. uh, being that's basically Hail, a copy, dude. <laughs> uh, 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 a uh, photocopy of your mind. Pretty much, right? It's not gonna have a. It's not gonna have a soul. Right. It's not gonna uh, uh, be a living thing. But you know, yeah. who knows? I find AI. Yeah, that's right, man. I'll be like scary. up in heaven critiquing my fake self down. I'm like, that's not. I would never do that. Yes. I would never do that. You're like yes. flying down, smacking yourself in the back of the head, like laughing. <laughs> yeah, like what kind of well, robot? It's like, who built you? That was one of my favorite scenes in um, in uh, Invincible, where you had uh, the uh, a robot. Right, who was actually like a drone that was being piloted? Oh yeah, by yeah, you're right. This that show's pretty cool. Uh, the show is pretty poor cool. guy that was born basically as like you know like uh, Belial from Basket Case. Yeah, and totally. He was, and he wanted you know the the uh, the blood, I call them the Blood Brothers, right? Because that, that's right. what they always remind me of. Um, create a clone yeah. of him, but you know not fucked up, and then he makes a copy of his mind to print onto that being but it but it makes it very very clear he's dying that's yeah, I guess not prime's, prime's bringing the superhero content that's actually entertaining like the last two years they like fucking yeah, well, I mean, Marvel. like that so and fucking good. the boys are like the best shit going on right now it actually endeared me to those villains actually yeah like, was, yes. really, they, they, they actually fun. cared they were like yeah oh, dude you know you're gonna die you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this ain't yeah. gonna be I like you. Show. <laughs> yeah, and all because he was in love Art. with Monster What's up, Girl. What's up, hey guys, good to see you. 
You too, man. What's up, Hart? Yo, what's what's up? Up? Oh, Hart. Hey, what's up, brother? Good to see you, Hart, man. How did the, uh, to, how did the, uh, how did the thingy doing thing go? Spoken word with my book, Still Dead, and uh, my other book, Poems for the Dead. So I was just over working with the guys from Psychotoxin Press and did a 20-minute spoken word set. So that was fun. Oh, fuck that yeah. Bitch it. Oh, yeah. That's cool, man. You're going yep. like full Henry Rollins here. Well, I always have been. That's something that, that people do about me is uh, yeah. my first collection of poetry, Poems for the Dead, was printed in 1995. And I've been doing spoken words since the summer of 93 when my girlfriend was killed. And that was the when I started writing this stuff and performing this stuff. It was a cathartic. I had to get these right. emotions out of me. So yeah. uh, I have had this book is the Chaos Edition because Chaos did a printing with it. And so both these books were for sale at the Hot Topic stores in the mall in the 90s. That's oh, insane. That's, and the funny part about that is I had a fake salesperson. I had a fake salesperson that, that did. It was me, but I was Conrad Neuhart. <laughs> I got to thank you for (laughs) sitting in for me last week with the big hat and all that heart. Appreciate that, bro. You got to respect the hustle. You got to respect the hustle. Heart has had a very, very interesting uh, life. Just (laughs) insane. Yeah, Um, Conrad. Yeah, we were just uh, we were just talking about uh, the uh, the actor that was uh, the the Gill Man. Uh, from the creature of the Black Lagoon, Raku Browning, mm. no longer with us. Oh, First thing I thought when I saw his picture was, um, he would have been, he would have been great movies without the mask. Yeah, no, he looked kind of looked like a well, like a movie star. I just remember hearing when I was a kid that this guy could like hold his breath for like five minutes. Jesus right? Bro. There's that wonderful scene where he is, um, you know. Um, in the water, swimming underneath the heroine who's, uh, oh. you know, swimming above him, and he's kind of below her, and she can't see him. Just the fucking, just the the hand movements and everything. How he's like, you know, also reaching up, right, kind of like about to touch her foot and stuff like that. So he was giving a real performance. It's not like it was just like just a guy in a rubber suit. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, um, Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, he was just, you know, he wasn't an actor. He was just like, he was just like a jock or something. He was like, um, I thought he was a scuba guy. I thought like he was a swimming kind of scuba dive guy. Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Because cool. uh, like it says here, we, we've lost him. Yeah, 93. That's, you know, can't do much better than that. Yeah, he was an underwater cinematographer and stuntman. And he was uniquely uh, equipped to play the creature. Uh, and he went on to direct uh, even some underwater sequences in movies like Thunderball. Hey, and, but uh, can I... Would he, he, said, would he be yeah. considered... Wouldn't he be considered an actor, though? Because the guys who step into the Godzilla suits, like, they're considered yes. actors. You know I, I, oh, anyway. dude, I, absolutely. When I or say Derek that he Mears wasn't an actor, I'm saying he the didn't come from that background. All the guys that play Jason, the guys right. that play... Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. Right. Swamp they're right. acting. For sure. For sure. Without a fucking doubt, right? Like, I mean, yeah, he's a swamp n- nobody is ever going to do a better Michael Myers walk than fucking Nick Castle. I would agree with that. That's never gonna. It's never gonna fucking happen. I would agree with uh, that. Uh, but yeah, uh, some other cool news. That's uh, well, cool news I should say. That's creature related. Is and also speaking of, um, uh, um, well, uh, who's the guy who did Invincible? It's uh, Kirkman. Kirkman. Robert Kirkman. Thank you. Uh, his imprint, Skybound, is doing. A creature from the Black Lagoon comic book series. Hey, you know what? His his label. They also put out fucking um, Manifest Destiny. You know, I, that was the first book I picked up by them, and it was a horror uh, ex- explorer horror, kind of like um, yes. you know that, that book that t- that showed the terror on AMC. So yes, you know, that's cool. I haven't even fucking awesome. read his his shit, but you know, this looks that was dope, and this looks fucking. I mean, well, yeah, I, I was very high. disappointed. In the, in the 90s, they were they were trying to revive Creature of the Black Lagoon. And I, I'm friends with David J. Scowl, uh, the screenwriter and author. He oh, wrote I love that, the dude. first Crow film. He wrote several yep. of the Critters movies. He yep. wrote several chapters of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 
And nice. they had him working on a of the Black Lagoon script for a long time. And it was Dope. a dream project for him. He even was had like John a Black thing? Lagoon pinball machine at his house. <laughs> so I, don't oh, know I love that, that fucking thing. They had that in the barn for me. In the uh, season two of The Terror. Like, oh, really? Yeah, because it, it wasn't about the pirate ship. You know what I'm saying? It was. <laughs> it was about uh, yeah, I've, heard, I've heard it's. I've heard it's not. It was horrible. Uh, I haven't started yeah, watching it. I just watched uh, Sisu the other night. Hard recommend. Mm. I want to um, check that out. What? Yeah, fucking Sisu. Check that shit I out. Got I got it. I oh, Sisu. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About the fucking uh, uh, Finnish dude. Prospector. Yeah. yeah. Fighting the nat the Nazis. Mer mm -hmm. Merkin Nazis. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I mean, I I'm excited for this, man. Yeah, I'm it looks really fucking dope, dude. The this. covers are killing it. I love that cover of the mic. Right? Look at that you shit, know? man. That's my favorite. Good. That's badass. Who's yeah, that I like that a lot. Cover. That's very. It, it's very. It, I mean, it's the same concept as Jaws, but it's. But just the really, paint. It looks like it's you know it's fucking yes. school, man. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's just the, the imminency of it is this as well. Well, it says Universal Monsters. So does that mean it's an official licensed product from Universal? I was about to say yeah. that's that's a really encouraging sign. This is an indication right. that if this does well, which I'm sure it will, that uh, Skybound is going to do more shit with the Universal mm. Monsters, which means we could see fucking shit. We could get the whole Unholy Trinity, Dracula, the Wolfman, mm -hmm. maybe the Mummy. Uh, you know, I, I, I've always... Uh. Yeah. No, I've never been been able to kind of understand why Universal has left that money source, that income source. Well, the thing is, is you don't fallow. need Universal to do to do Dracula, the Mummy, or the Wolfman. Those are all public domain things. They can't they can't say shit. You can't. They don't own it. it Frankenstein's in the public domain. Same well, with Frankenstein uh, is Frankenstein but is the like Black Lagoon is it? theirs. They own that. I thought right. everything yeah. was in public domain except for um, Creature from the Black Lagoon. I thought that was owned no. by... No, uh, no. Yeah, um, it, it, most of it is like the mummy, but you can't have your concept look like theirs. Yep. Yeah, uh, you have to... It's, it, it's the same way like for... Frankenstein's um, a tribute one. The bolts and whatnot. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Frankenstein's like the trippiest one because with the bolts, like the Karloffian Frankenstein from Universal, you can't have yes. the fucking bolts and the fucking yeah. clamps in the forehead. You got to break it up. Why I thought it was over a hundred years old, though. I mean, you could. What's no, the limit is. on copyright? He is, but here's the thing: <laughs> they own their version. <laughs> you you can't use though. their version. You can't yeah. use their version. But Preston has What's a point, copyright though? like on an image? Isn't copyright like Preston seventy-five point, years? Their, their shit's probably coming up though. Their shit's probably coming up pretty soon. Well, you know, what they'll do really is they'll, they'll, you have to prove confusion in the marketplace. As a guy who's been to court over copyright and trademark infringement and beat Marvel, thank you. Uh, you have you to don't. prove, not only do you have to prove that you own the mark, you have to prove that it's active and then you have to prove confusion in the marketplace. Mm. Confusion? Right. God damn, they make it so complicated. Right? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's, it, it's, that's just, of you know sticky like legal fucking spaghetti that I wouldn't even begin. Well, to that's try cool to though, man. The comics coming out. This comic looks dope. Yeah, and yeah. like I said, hopefully we'll you know this will be a big success, and then we can get get the other Universal monsters in there. Yeah, yeah. And then of get course a fucking monster rumble. Oh yeah, yeah. Beat them up at the end. Monster wars. Well, you know, there's a screenplay mm -hmm. yeah, for yeah. Uh, uh, Dracula versus the Wolfman. That mm. is um, uh, excellent, which I read, which was written by Kurt Siodmak uh, back in like the 1940s, and they never filmed that. Make that into a fucking comic. I think that, with Lugosi that, uh, and fucking um, uh, Lon Chaney Jr. Like get an fun. artist that can really do their likenesses really well. Yeah, I mean, that, that dude that did um, that movie we reviewed, uh, Frankenstein versus the Mummy. Like the guy who did Terrifier? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To do the... <laughs> yeah, sure. oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Universal monsters. <laughs> For sure. But, oh, yeah. yeah, totally, dude. Yeah, it'd be but, fucking dope. But yeah, well... Uh, Are you guys uh, talking about Damien Leone? Yeah. 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 You know what's funny? I just made a recent discovery. Uh, I have the first appearance of Art the Clown was a short film that was part of the American Horrors TV series back in 09. Oh, yes. Shit. We've seen... Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's on that's that's on the YouTubes and... Mm -hmm. uh. That's not 
included that's not the the the, the chapter in um it's in they, all, they hallows eve, into all hallows eve one right so it's the first one where they're on the train and the subway and right. it's before art the clown really developed his full finalized look yeah it's not even the same actor right and now we can't imagine anybody but that fucking nope. guy and that dude looks yeah. out of makeup he looks so fucking he looks he like the Joker. Does a good job. He looks, like, <laughs> he looks like the Joker without makeup. He'd be perfect. Fantastic. He already is. It kind of is, right? With with art, uh, a mime Super Joker. Super fucking talented. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a, well, this is just a little thing that fucking cracked me up. Uh, Severin <laughs> is putting out a 4K edition of uh, Burial Ground. Now, those of you really? who have never seen Burial Ground, once again, what the fuck is wrong with you? No, no, I'm all like, I know, I can understand because, like, maybe, maybe you've never even heard of Burial Ground. That's forgivable. I understand. But here's the thing that you need to understand your life is not complete until you have seen this fucking uh, 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 sleaze fest. I've never Heart. seen Burial Ground, never heard of it. So I've seen it. Oh, it you're in for a treat. Thanks you're for in, me you're in for a really, me really like a, a spicy Italian meatball. Thanks for putting me on that shit. I'm gonna check it out. <laughs> I want to do this on this on the stream. I've been wanting to do it for a while, but it's it's just not available. I bet I could find a pretty good print yeah. on hey. um yeah. on uh, uh the YouTube's. But hard pop up eventually. Fucking Peter Bark in fucking 4K. <laughs> <laughs> my only one that just finds this fucking hilarious that it's like these super, super greasy, 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 greasy fucking uh, Italian trash uh, 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 splatter movies are getting like 4K treatment. <laughs> it's Any so way to get people cool. to buy them, that's really what it's all right. about is it's just yes. one more way to repackage something where the licensing is done most of the people that own the film are all like gone they're not on this earth anymore you know so uh, these right. houses are just raiding it you know and i'm i'm enjoying the same thing at american horrors but i i prefer the old beat up prints and the vhs prints and Me so too. on american yeah. horrors i kind of lean towards playing those instead of the super cleaned up pristine you know airbrush like sure. oh, i mean yeah. it's like it, it's like like it's, like how an old comic book smells also exactly takes yeah. yeah oh for sure magic. for sure and, try, and believe me i get it right i really do i understand do you? The, the vhs guys <laughs> but I, I, for me some of us aren't convinced that you get it <laughs> but you really really get it <laughs> i like i'm sorry no it's just it's the okay. way you try to we already know you get it but you still try to sell us it's awesome yes no yeah i got to i got to no well here's the thing it's well it's a all the 4K, 2K, DVD, VHS, fucking H-Track, Flexi Disc. They're all different ways to watch the same movie. And when you well, pretty watch soon you're not going to be able to watch the same movie. What mm -hmm. was that? Edit it. Pretty soon they're going to be editing all these. I know. You own it on That's why yeah. physical yeah. media yeah. is so important, and that is why uh, 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 you've got people like Severin that are putting this shit out. And it has, I mean, DVD when it first came out was a collector's market, right? And yeah. then next thing you knew, no, uh, it's just like, you know, I think it was uh, Anchor Bay stopped putting shit out. Uh, uh, Blue Underground was still kind of around. But, uh, you know, uh, your basic like Hollywood well, DVDs Anchor Bay got had bought no out. extras. Anchor just Bay got bought out. That's what happened to Anchor Bay. The, the company that owns Stars Media bought out Anchor Bay. Oh, so that's what happened. Yeah, you yeah. had a bunch of greedy corporate heads get involved in a genre that they don't know mm -hmm. anything about, and they right. got the brand and they saw it was profitable, but they right. didn't. They don't understand the market. They don't understand why we like this stuff. Right. They just keep grinding it out. Like when uh, the main studios were putting out their collectible covers of Scarface and all these other movies yeah. that been around forever, <laughs> and they had these really shitty drawings on them. And they're, oh, it's a collectible now. It's like a comic book. Look at that. Do -do -do. <laughs> it's it's a shit. They don't know what they're doing. They it's don't so true. Yeah, they're Give clueless. Give me the original poster. Give me some poster from Spain or Italy or Hungary and put yes. that yep. on there. Yes. That'll be cool. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, at least Shout Factory does shit like that. Yeah. Right? Shout Factory is yep. also killing it. 
Another one that they're coming out with, I, that Severn's coming out with, I don't know if this this is in 4K. I think it's uh, 2K. They're coming out with uh, Jess Franco's uh, Dracula Prisoner of Frankenstein. Which, well, you just had Stephen Byro was releasing through Unearthed Films uh, the Guyver in 4K. Oh, really? No yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh my God. Sometimes yeah, so it works against Guyver. you because you can see all the stuff that you like. It it it, it goes against old special effects. You know what I mean? Like it's so uh, the, the the picture is so clear you can see where all the seams are. I'd I was talking about the one with JJ Walker and uh, yeah, like I was watching Mark um the, yes. the firm. Uh, and uh, just, you know, streaming on a big TV, and I'm watching this scene with Gene Hackman, and the, and the thing that I could not get away from was he had this long, arching eyebrow hair that was, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just, like, ruining it for me, and I'm like, you know, if this is, like, on a big screen and just regular... Yeah, try you know, watching Sunday Aliens, way. the first Aliens on 4K. It'll completely destroy the movie for you. Yeah, okay. I got it. Yeah, and exactly, that's a big right. part really? of, we were talking about... Uh, horror i was on a different show and we were that talking about hair scared the, the shit out the of dark me. that you can't quite see really clearly is spookier mm -hmm. than super well lit 4k absolutely yeah. You yeah. Yeah. Fire uh, spitting out of his balls and his ass and yeah 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 not, well, i mean that's one of the scary. things that's one of the things that's that that i think is ingenious about uh tonight's movie american world for london mm. is that um uh, John Landis is very careful at showing you the monster uh, piecemeal. Right. Right? Yeah. But you don't get the full reveal until the very end of the film. And then, there of course, is. it's Rick Baker we're talking about here. So, yeah. phew, out of the fucking uh, park. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it is a movie that is as famous or maybe even more famous uh, for, you know, for its special effects than for right. being just a but it's still uh, a really, really solid piece. Like every scene drives yes. the story forward. There's no yeah. fat yes. on this film whatsoever. I just watched Thank it you. again with my girlfriend, and nice. she's younger than me. So we're watching it. She's she's 22 years younger than me, but she was into it, man. She oh, was into yeah. it. She was wide awake. She enjoyed the film. Got all the jokes, all the humor. You know, it's a cold and a wet out of sight. <laughs> right. Yeah. You made me mix. Yeah, and Rick Nails in that scene. I told I'd totally forgotten that. Mm -hmm. That whole thing with you made me miss was so good, and all of it, you know, all of it just it really holds up. Like stealing the it balloons does. from the kid in the zoo when he's naked. <laughs> oh God, that's so yeah. funny! It's still funny. I love it's the like joke the, about the people from the UN on the plane too. That's <laughs> it up. But the, it's like the war comedy, man. too heavy. I love that. I love that joke. You know, I mean, it's... Somebody just the, said that the, already, didn't they? Yeah, no, but here's the thing, too, is I'm as here. much here. as there's, like, really funny shit in in, uh, in American Werewolf, it's not a horror... It's not a comedy horror film. It's not a horror comedy. It's a horror movie. And that was what I really loved about it, was that it had... The, yeah, no, of course. I mean, it's John Landis, right? And John Landis at that point uh, had never done anything but comedies uh his very first one was uh schlock. schlock yes uh which is actually i guess where he first met uh rick baker and um you know With the he, fake gorilla uh, right yeah. <laughs> and those kentucky fried way it goes schlock uh kentucky fried movie, uh, movie. uh what animal about house movie? blues brothers and then i think yeah. this i think so right? yeah this movie and, scared the fuck out of me as a kid, man. Oh, no, Animal was, House. Me too. John Landis directed Animal House, right? Yes. I thought Harold Ramis or yeah. Ivan Reitman did that. No. He worked on the oh. script, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. John Landis directed it. He directed right. it. Because he right, went right, from right. Animal House to Blues Brothers. Right. Good stuff. Hell. And uh, oh, great stuff. And, you know, he was one of those guys who grew up like uh, Joe Dante and his other friends on like hammer horror movies. And that's one of the things that I've always loved about John Landis is, um, look, I, I wouldn't say, God, what was that movie he did with, that was like a horror movie, but, but it wasn't, but it was like a, it was shot as a musical. It was a Burke and Hare about the yeah. infamous uh, uh, grave, uh, grave Robbers. Really? Simon Pegg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, meant to John be. Landis. Yeah. yeah. 
so it was it was Simon Pegg and um, Andy Circus horror Andy musical. Circus, thank you. Rocky yeah, he did, he did do the, the funny vampire movie with the chick from La Femme Nikita and with uh, Don Rickles. Innocent Blood. And, uh, oh, yeah. Robert Lydia. Yes. Uh, oh, that was a good fun. movie. I like that That's movie. That's an awesome, that was a good movie. Movie. Yeah. That's an awesome movie. The special effects in that are amazing. I got to go back and rewatch that one. I remember I that one. I just noticed my heart looks like the singer from Monster Magnet right now. <laughs> John Rickles, man. Oh, oh God, yeah, he's like, a little out when he fucking like burns up. And let's explodes. let's cover that one next week because I really like the chick from La Femme Nikki. You talk oh, about yeah, Peter yeah, Wilson. Let's oh. see where it is. Yeah, Peter no, Wilson she, is that you're talking about? No, I think you're thinking of the television show Pops. You talk about Peter the Asian Wilson one, the TV okay. show. Either one. Uh, this was a French actress from nice. La Femme Nikita. Yeah. Yes. Not the TV show. The movie. No, no, the movie. The and it. Very, very different. Well, still, yes. I'm saying, let's cover that next week because I haven't seen that. Let's... Well, we'll, t we'll take that into mature consideration, Pops, for sure. This is Innocent uh, Blood 1992? Yeah. Yeah, this that's a, it. Innocent Blood, yeah. That, that gives me a reason to watch it. See? This is a fan poster here. That's kind of cool. Uh, this cool. is the poster that was OG uh, poster. just for Don Rickles, I'll tell you that. For sure. Uh, this was the poster that I remember. I saw this me too, actually. Me too. I'm really permissive parents, so they took me to see this when I was a the little boy. Man. And uh, what could I say? It was freaking uh, amazing. And then here's the thing: Stephen King had said in uh, *Don's Macabre* that for some reason, for the last 40 years, there hasn't been a single really good werewolf movie. And then shortly after. This and the Howling come out pretty <laughs> the much the same, the same summer, didn't they? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I love them both. And uh, <laughs> then there was a lot of discussion over, um, you know, which transformation was better: the Rick Baker Howling. or the Rob Poutine? Howling. <laughs> Howling, Poutine, Howling. <laughs> this Howling is cool. Scary this is not. Now. Yeah, I love this one. I love this. Trailer. That's like what you what you want but to now, see. If you know, it, watching the movie, but you never see <laughs> that scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hey, uh, Kit Bash Federation is here. What, what do you say? You got filmed in the what was filmed in the Jeff? Berg? Yeah, what up, Jeff? What up, Jeff? The Howling or or uh, American Werewolf in London was filmed in the Berg in Pittsburgh. Anyways, oh, um, definitely the Howling. Had to be hollow. Well, yeah, yeah, duh, the Howling. I mean, it, no, it was the Howling was shot out in Los Angeles. It was shot out, you know, by the coast. Oh, by, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. In California, right? Oh, oh Innocent yeah, Blood. Yeah, in in, in Blood was filmed in the in, in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, okay, right. that makes sense. So right. this is not a real, authentic comic book cover. This is just fan art. It's these yeah, slaughtered cool. lamb comics. Comic, is the yeah, publisher. pretty cool. I love that. Fifty cents. It's dope. Yeah, I like. I'd buy that. Of. I'd buy that for a dollar, right? For sure, am, am I I'd buy that shirt. for a buck fifty? For a buck fifty? Am, am I incorrect? This is really good. In that Rick Baker got the first Academy Award for special effects for this movie. I, I believe, believe he did. that's right. He yeah. did. And then the last, yeah, because that wasn't even a category. That was yeah. And then, like, and then the last yeah. one he got was for Night um, Professor. Those awards are such a fucking joke. Oh, yeah. Swear to God. It, was, it was for the Wolfman. So the one that he got that started this category, and then I the like one that place. he retired with, both werewolves. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, and he did and he did beautiful work. Uh, another thing that's great about Rick Baker is guy looks seems to be in excellent health. I think he's pretty mm -hmm. much retired, but he has, I think, probably the dopest collection of horror memorabilia outside of like maybe uh, Brian Crisco, Brian Crisco, Forrest J. Ackerman. Because <laughs> Forrest J. Ackerman, of course, had the collection, but like I know Rick Baker has got tons and tons and tons of like. Didn't he also really do awesome on the Werewolf TV show with? Uh, oh, that was yes. cool. I remember that. Chuck Back Connors, in that too. Uh, he, had the, he had the pentagram Chuck on his Connors hand. Was the bad Wasn't guy? Late eighties or something yeah. like that. Yeah, that, yeah. 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 remember like when they did um, Auto Man after. Yeah. Uh, after Tron, and then yeah, they yeah. did, Ma they did Ma uh, the that, whole... that show Manimal after. The oh, American God. Man. What did they say, <laughs> like, from Manimal. that, yes. from know, that werewolf that TV word. show, like, the hump on a werewolf's back was actually an oxygen tank for the oh, uh, people inside the suit? Really? I'm pretty sure that, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what they said, because this 
They couldn't breathe. <laughs> that's, that's entirely impossible. That's entirely possible. I can There's a lot that. of animatronics in this too, and with the animatronics, you have to understand that, that you know they're 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 be, they're puppets. Right, but they're really high tech puppets, and there's not just one puppeteer. There's one guy operating the mouth. There's another guy operating the eyes. It's uh, it's really like the Energizer Bunny, or the ears, yeah. like in the Werewolf TV show, the ears move around. Yes, yes, yeah. but yeah. but his face is caught in a perpetual snarl. That was the thing also in the Werewolf by Night Night comics. Nobody could draw him not snarling. And, uh, and wow, uh, you know, it's, that's one of the things I loved about uh, Bad Moon when we covered that was that very much felt like it was a throwback to, uh, that to, fucking uh, to this. Scene in the the beginning, man. Does anybody follow Rick Baker's Instagram? Uh, I do. No, I don't use Instagram. No, he had an Instagram. It's yeah, he does. pretty good according, according yeah, to, sure. uh, according to Jeff. His video on with uh, Joe Rogan's pretty good, too. It's a beautiful. Oh fan yes, art. yes. I remember That's the documentary on Rick Baker. Like it was, it was fucking amazing. The scene where he's getting uh, attacked um, in the beginning on the moors. He, uh, Rick yes. Baker's punching um, Griffin Dunn or Dunn, whatever the fuck his name is. He punched yeah. him with the head puppet, you know, um, hit him hard, <laughs> and, and, and uh, Griffin was um, he was wasn't very happy about that. Um, the, the, the one scene where he's running through the woods, he's having the dreams, you know, and yeah. uh, he's laying in the bed, and then the nurse is with him, at, you know. That scene always fucked me up as a kid, and he smiles with his big fucking yellow eyes and the big teeth. You know, yes. that, that give me nightmares. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, there's just a so lot funny. of really great uh, imagery, and we're gonna look at some clips too. I got fucking clips out the fucking uh, yin yang. Yep. Yeah. Um, I like her too. The I, gotta, I didn't even think about that. The origin of this, evidently. Um, mm -hmm. John Landis said he was in Yugoslavia. He was like doing second second unit shit for like mm. Kelly's heroes. Mm. Um, he has like a picture of himself with fucking Clint Eastwood and fucking uh, um, uh, um, Donald Sutherland. Yes, and fucking Kojak. Then again, our buddy Don Rickles. Yep. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I totally fucking forgot about it, that he's in there. I'm out here getting some, drinking some wine, eating some yeah. cheese, getting some yeah. rays, yeah. man. God damn yes. That was a favorite yeah, of mine as a kid, Kelly's Heroes. Oh, awesome. Movie. Awesome movie. And not as good as The Great Escape, but, but, but pretty badass. Uh, he said that um, they were going, like, across this, like, in, like the, what's now the former uh, Yugoslavia, on like a 400 mile road, right? Mm -hmm. And they uh, reached like a crossroads and there were some gypsies there. And they to see what they were doing. And they were burying somebody. And they were burying them standing up. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> these were so people, these people were, just to clarify, they were dead, right? Yes. You just said they were burying some people, but. We were not clarifying. You no, know, they were they were burying a corpse. They were burying okay. a corpse. Yeah, right? lowering, thanks for thanks for. Were they with ropes or what? It was. I'm, I'm guessing, right? Because they were just watching mm. them do this, right? Mm. And they said the oh, hole was, was like really deep, right? So I mean, they still huh. bury them like fucking six feet, but they bury them standing up. Huh. Twelve foot hole. That's hey, Brian. You gotta yes. take note of that, Brian. Take note. Of oh note yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's dude. This is cool folklore. Like an interesting man. visual, mm. right? And the reason is to like confuse the vampire, because that way it's just I, I think it's that they just move. disorientation. Yeah, that like they can only move forward; they can't move. Like, I I don't know the particulars of it, but it was in case he got up. Mm. And so he said the guy was driving and was like laughing at oh, those stupid gypsies, and then he thought, <clears throat> well, what if he actually did get? Right, and that was actually like kind of the origin of uh, of this movie, where the germ of it, he said, uh, came from. And uh, you, you know, he was always a a, a massive uh, Hammer fan. Him, fucking um, uh, uh, um, Martin Scorsese, uh, Joe Dante, like all those dudes, like they were like just the right age. When like Curse of Dracula, I mean, um, Curse of Frankenstein, and Horror of Dracula came out, and uh, 
he just always wanted to do a horror movie. And he said, and and he's also somebody who says that he it drives him crazy when people call this movie a comedy. He's just like, it's the first scene in the movie when you first see these characters, they're riding on the back of a truck, on a truck with sheep. He's just like, this is a horror movie. They're both going to fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, but yeah, no, of course it's got lots of humor. Um, a lot of humor. This, you need the humor really helps you to loosen up tension because yes. when you're making your film, it's a roller coaster. So when you're doing it, just like when I do the programming for American horrors, I don't just put on chainsaw kill after chainsaw kill. Right. In between right, our right. movies, it's all funny. I do it on purpose so that in between yeah, the sure. horror, it's funny. Like I think that's one of the best formulas about Spanguli or any of the horror hosts. So yeah. for myself as a horror host on American horrors, we always make sure to have funny in between to, right. to let the tension go. Right. So you can bring it back up. A lot of modern horror, like we've been watching a lot of modern horror lately, and it's it's it, that's what it's missing. It's missing yeah, like it's not funny. funny, you know? Yeah, yeah. like it's all tension, and it always le like like ends on a cliffhanger or some stupid yeah. shit like that. You know? For a bummer, <laughs> we, we I called it. Uh, my, my wife actually... and I called it the bummer moment, like Breaking yeah. Bad. Breaking Bad, we we called it. You either have the bummer moment, oh man, or you got the <laughs> yeah, he won, right. he got out of the cage. <laughs> Great yeah. job! He got the killer. All right, and we call that the yeah moment. And yeah. like shows like Breaking Bad, they they don't have a yeah moment. There's no, no yeah moment in the whole goddamn series. <laughs> yeah, everybody's miserable and unhappy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of the point. Power. It's the same way that when you have humor <clears throat> to break up the tension, you also have to love horror movies that are just fucking relentless. They're just like out to fucking get you. But I mean, I know Joe Bob Briggs. I disagree with him. He thinks that he's convinced that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a uh, is a dark comedy. That's just right. Every Friday the Thirteenth, besides the first one, is a dark comedy. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I'm a nightmare before. I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street. That's yeah, yeah. He's a wow. Bugs Bunny after. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it's interesting because, like, I've been on, I've been on this thing where I'm watching lesser uh, uh, horror movie sequels, like ones that I just never even bothered with, right? Like Watchers Two or uh, <laughs> Silent Night, <laughs> Deadly Night Four, you know, <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> right, right. Because every now and then you'll discover something. You'll be like, damn, that was actually pretty good. So I, I finished the last two Nightmare on Elm Street movies that I hadn't seen, which is, I think, Freddy's Dead and uh, the one before that, The Dream Child, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And The Dream Child I actually thought was okay, and then the last one, uh, Freddy's Dead, was just fucking uh, horrible. You can tell they had <laughs> no like Freddy's Dead at all, and, and a little-known fact is the woman that directed it hated horror movies. Rachel Taylor, like, oh, yeah, wow. went on to like do a film, So how can right. you do that if you don't like them? Exactly. This exactly. is probably going to be controversial, but my all-time favorite is still Dream Warriors. <laughs> oh, so people like Dream Warriors. Got that Doc and Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Preston acted like that's like some kind of like a controversial fucking stance. Well, I don't. Everything I heard was like a lot of people don't like Dream Warriors. No, it's what? really good. It's was the it? one that really I made it. it. The, that was the one that really broke it out of the ghetto of. Uh, your average slasher film, that was the film that knocked it into the stratosphere yes. and set the tone for... No, I, I totally set. agree, but there's a lot of people that like it as like a, you know, like in that indie type of alternative. Hey, it's written by Frank Darabont, guys. Yes, yeah. yes. And directed by, by uh, Chuck Russell, who did also that absolutely amazing remake of The Blob. I do like that Blob remake with uh, Brian so Dillon. Good. Yeah, yeah, that was bad. I really yeah. like that. Good. So good. <laughs> But yeah, so 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 these guys go to the slaughtered lamb. Uh, in New York City, there is a place called the slaughtered lamb that has a sign like that. It's in the it? West Village. It's and not nearly it's, about that. <laughs> I want to hear it. This is where like a lot of the punks and the goths would like go for like oh, brunch really? and m m cool. mimosas and shit like that back in mimosas. the mimosas. Uh, in the Disney, in the Disney. I've never, right. I've never hung out is with that most yeah. club drinking the most of most guys. I, that I don't know what goth people you're hanging out with, but that's never been a thing at the goth club. <laughs> you could play vampire mimosa. Vampire. Oh, oh well, the vampires are like a, were completely 
they were a different group. They they kind of moved in on the gun scene. I have no idea. And some of them were, I mean, they, you know, they were like hopeless nerds, but and a couple of them were dangerous. Do you use blood orange orange juice? Oh, I mean, I can yes, I'm well of I've done that. Makes sense. In Rome at the present time. I like mimosas. I do too. I wasn't I wasn't dissing mimosas. <laughs> so, yeah, these motherfuckers. You know, this is a classic hammer horror scene, right? You half expect to see uh, Michael Ripper hanging out behind the bar. And, you know, if you're a hammer stan, you, when you die and you go to get a drink, you hope to see Michael Ripper <laughs> behind the bar. He was just like a... Well, uh, like a that was his part. <laughs> he was that character in like every hammer movie. Um, so... It's it's very much like the, like the scene that, that I think opens Dracula Prince of Darkness actually, where you know this couple arrive and uh, you know they're uh, asking Safe in the rain. questions that they shouldn't be asking right that the people don't want to talk about and they basically get thrown out on their ear and now these motherfuckers realize that they basically just consigned these kids to their death. That is so odd at a hammer handbook. Right? Must go to them. I heard nothing. Yeah, which is once I'm telling you, this is like right out of Dracula Prince of Darkness. I heard nothing. <laughs> nothing. I see nothing. I see nothing. Ogan hear it. Ogan hear it. <laughs> Schultzy. I know nothing. Nothing. I'm on the, I'm on the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, this is just a great suspenseful scene because first, I think it's behind them. Oh, he made it in here. Then it's in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the sound is moving. It's just like right on the edge of the light. They're being right? stalked. Yeah. yeah. They're being stalked. They're being hunted. Is it possible to remaster this so that you can get the sound to carry from one side to the other? Oh, I wonder if it was uh, like that in the theaters. It was Did like that in the, this in the theater. It, well, okay. I'll never forget seeing this in a movie theater. What's the plan? Plan? But, but also, the there's time but I played yes, Doom on a surround sound Holy game. Crap. That had surround sound for Doom, and I could hear things moving around behind me. It scared the shit yes. out of me. <laughs> yep. I remember like like one of my favorite moments once again going back to fucking Anchor Bay, which was like cri the Criterion Collection for like sick freaks like us. Um, was what was listening to was watching uh, 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 the release of Zombie, one of the first ones, which wasn't that great, but still the, the sound was great. And I remember just no, I'm sorry, this was City no, this was City of the Living Dead, which we did on the stream. I just remember there's a scene where I hear it's like uh. There's a fucking zombie behind me, just kind of like making a noise. So yes, with really good surround sound, absolutely. You can get that, that like way. the Exorcist. When yes. you hear the things scratching in the attic and stuff, yeah. and the attic with surround sound, it's really good. Yeah, uh, sounds so important in horror. Try watching any horror movie with the sound off. You think it's a dog? Oh shit! What is it? Yeah. It's a sheepdog or something. Come on, sheepdog. Yeah, that ain't sheepdog. no, that ain't no sheepdog, son. Not far enough. Come on. Attack. The howls of ears. Oh, so they just fucking book it. Sounds far away. Not far enough. Come on. Attack. What? Where are we going? I don't know. I'll tell you when we get there. Okay. Cause. Oh! <laughs> and now this is the setup for the jump scare. You really scared me, you shithead. Help me up or what? <laughs> That's a, look. I I hate jump scare movies, and I've always considered jump scares to be a cheap shot. But when they're done with elegance, they're fantastic. And I and this is a, a good example. <laughs> That's Rick Baker right there, and socking him up with that thing, <laughs> jacking him up. <laughs> yeah, Rick's got that on a broomstick. Yep. He does. 
And then, I don't know, man. It might hurt. I, like it's I was in the Orphan Killer 2, Bound by Blood, and they killed like, me with a fake brick. My head got beat in with this fake rubber oh. brick. But the guy that was doing it was a professional MMA fighter, oh, and fuck. he was just squishing the brick. I was getting palm striped. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! The shit out of me! Oh, oh god! No. I'm just like, guys, I'm gonna have to call cut here. I'm gonna pass out. You got concussed. You got a fucking concussion. Yeah, the director's no. looking at the script. I don't see where tapping out. It doesn't say tap out here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, I mean, David Norton here uh, just books it, which is the right thing to do. He's leaving his friend to get mauled to death. By a yeah, you would think conveniently, if somebody's getting their throat ripped out, they wouldn't be able to scream. That would yeah, be me. Yeah, they say well, it's an elegant way. If he's it's not, not able to right scream, then throat. David Naughton doesn't turn around and go back. I'd be like, Matt, drop and roll, drop and roll. Yeah, I'm stop, drop and roll. roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, if 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 I'm ever hanging out with the boys, we'll get attacked by a werewolf. Just just run and leave. Hopefully, I'll survive and become a werewolf myself. <laughs> Yeah, so finally these motherfuckers went and did the right thing, tried to uh, fix their mistake, but... They chucked out the Mexican. Too late. Too fucking late. Wonderful shot. That's a Wonderful great shot. shot. Yeah. Reveal. Fantastic. Yeah, no mention of silver bullets in this too. Right. Because right, because this has a has its own mythology. Yeah, there's yeah. less um there's less fantasy to it. He starts love throwing the mythology it. No, behind more this fantasy. Movie. Yeah, more, no, there's more fantasy in this. There's like actually that. something that's very original in this, and that's what yeah, happens that. to the victims of the werewolves. Yeah, We're gonna get into that. Well, that part I like, but what I mean is like with the there's not there magic metals is the only thing that will work like a regular bullet i would like right. well that's not from that folklore. makes it more more accessible right but that's not from folklore that's from uh kurt siodmak when uh, his screenplay for um the wolfman right that's so that was the, the whole silver bullet thing maybe for vampires not for werewolves um but of course you know uh now the mythology has in a sense changed right the same way that Dracula changed uh, the uh, folklore mythology of uh, of vampires, right? When there were just stories of, you know, where there, there were generally uh, suicides that would come come back to life. And, you know, the reason you would stake them wasn't to, like, pierce the heart. It was to nail them to the ground. So really? they would just struggle and wouldn't be able I to get I think they put a unique twist on this movie, like on the werewolf lore. I thought it was pretty cool. I, I don't know if yeah. you want to mention it yet, but yeah, I, I do. Right. I know what you're saying about the victims and how you know, yes, and how it pertains to the to the werewolf itself, you know. Yes, well, yes. being trapped in limbo. Yeah. So what happens in this is if you're killed by a werewolf, you don't go up or down. You're you just fucking stuck. Purgatory. Right. Purgatory. Which is really horrifying. And then the ghosts are rotting as they are. Yes. Yeah. So but they're, they're also bad. haunting a werewolf. A pile of like bones or yes. what, you know? They're right. always there to remind him what he did. So he can't forget about it. You know, I that right. Cool. Um, but that might be part of folklore too. Different werewolf not. legends. You know? It's not. It's not. I, 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 I've studied that folklore. How dare very, you, Hart? Very, very, very How close. dare you? And then and it's never it's 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 never come across. It does get a mention in the uh, Werewolf's uh, Guide to Life, uh, which is like a really fun book. That's basically supposed to be the book. If you get bitten by a werewolf and the werewolf knows that it was him that bit you, he basically just like leaves it on your front doorstep. It's just like a bunch of photocopies, right? <laughs> that are, you know, or stuffs it into your mailbox and basically says. Yo, uh, sorry to tell you this, but uh, I'm a werewolf, and uh, I I'm the one who attacked you. Yeah. Almost like pe Peter. Yeah, like the, they have to. It's a primer. It's a it's a it's a werewolf pro a primer on being a werewolf. It's like they have to leave leave messages in everybody and everybody around the neighborhood. Uh, yeah, I just moved in. 
but anyway, I highly recommend that book. If you haven't read it, it's so much fun. And there's an audio book version that's also uh, excellent. Um, but in that, um, some of the werewolves claim that their uh, victims will come to get them. Well, not to get them, but just to haunt them. And they'll just uh, appear. And then there's discussion in the werewolf community of like whether, you know, these are hallucinations right produced Ooh. by their guilt or if they're actually being uh visited by the dead by their own, uh, own victims well a werewolf actually, is a supernatural entity right that's true yes it works it works so it kind of would make sense and we haven't really seen any modern werewolf films where they went back to the folklore where you you would brew up your poisonous werewolf cocktail with wolf's bane or you yes. had this special belt that you made smeared the witches saw and stuff and skins and you would belt oh, nope. that on to turn into the werewolf and that's more like peter stubb back in germany who ate a bunch of children the yes. world is waiting for you the world is waiting for you to do it i like that the howls the howl sound effects in this movie too i can't recall anything like it before hearing this you know even it's the breathing when, when they're in the moors, but also when they're in the bar, the pub, you can hear them. The howl, it's just so, it's so beefy. It's like, I don't know, the, the, the sound, I've never heard a wolf like that. It just stood out to me. The only thing that kind of comes close, I would say, is uh, the Panthers, the Black Panther in uh, Cat People, mm. the remake. Oh, Cat People's good. Yeah, Cat People's good. <laughs> Are, <laughs> Are we back? Boy, right? Are we back? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Did you guys you like be a Dr. pepper too? Be a Dr. Pepper. Be Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yeah. So those of you that were wondering, like, uh, where David Naughton came from, like, well, what his yeah. claim to fame was <laughs> before this, he was the Dr. Pepper douche. Then he could dance. I drink yes. Dr. Pepper, don't you see? Because it's the perfect taste for me. You see, homo. You just want to see him get killed by a werewolf right away. You homo from homo Slavia. You're just like singing and dancing and shit over some fucking soda. That's a cute dog. Is this the one with Jimmy J.J. Walker? Because I know there's one with Jimmy. Oh, no, this is the one with Popeye. Yeah, he's got Popeye in that motherfucker. They're saluting peppers, tooting peppers. I'm the pepper man. Would you like to be a pepper tooting pepper? Now, I always thought that shit was gross, uh, personally, but I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I like good. Dr. Pepper. I like me some Dr. Pepper. Fuck, I want a Dr. Pepper now from watching that commercial. Dr. Pepper's good with Lady uh, Lord Nelson's rum. Admiral uh, Nelson. Would, oh, yeah. would you Nelson's say that it's an acquired Dr. taste? Good. Would you say it's an acquired taste? A little bit. No, okay, a little, maybe a because I haven't tried I like it Mr. since Pibb. I was a kid, and you know how, Oops. like, a, as you as yeah. you get older, like your palate changes every seven years, yeah, allegedly. Yeah, what's the difference between Captain Morgan and Admiral Nelson besides a rank? Captain Morgan's way sweeter and more syrupy, yes. Uh, so, yes. And also Admiral Captain Morgan's Nelson's way more on the expensive. bottom shelf. I thought Ad Admiral Nelson had his other leg up on the barrel, yeah, he does have his other leg up on the barrel, and uh, he's yeah. uh, more Caucasian. <laughs> Admiral Nelson yeah. wearing the brown pants. Yeah, and don't yeah. use that shit. Don't use Captain Morgan if you're making uh, daiquiris, mm -hmm. because da the daiquiris are like way too sweet to begin with. Usually. No, you want to use Sailor Jerry's. That's yeah. what I'm Sailor thinking right Jerry now. Has a lot more uh, alcohol in it. Sailor Jerry's is really yummy. The best you drink in the the, the the best rum that Matt, I've had. Show us what you're drinking. I demand it. Oh, like well, I have it in the fridge right now, but <laughs> I never, I never tried Sailor Jerry, so I picked up a bottle. They had it on sale. I was drinking Rebel One Hundred before that, and then I usually like Kraken Rum. Uh, that Kraken's one's pretty good. Awesome. Oh, Kraken, Kraken, Kraken's Kraken. really Kraken's good. Really good. So uh, you'd be, you'd be very surprised at how good Black Heart Night is. Yeah, no, I mean, I, uh, I, I, the, I, 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 the bottle is pretty cool too. I've never had it here. Let me get rid of that. Has anybody <laughs> had the Lady Bly Rum? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yuck. Uh -uh. Sorry, I like rum, though. it's pretty smooth, I tried, man. I, I tried like Lady, Lady so Bly nice. has a there's something synthetic about it that I just couldn't. Mm. But but like Black Heart Jesus, 93 Jesus. is not that expensive, but it's really good. Uh, anyways, whatever. I just I just finished a bottle the other day faster mm. than I probably should have, but faster than a speeding bullet. I'm drinking water now, so 
Okay, I think this is the one with Jimmy J.J. Walker. Hey, Gus, you special enough to skate with us? I'm an all-star skater. There's nobody greater. This is before uh, the word special had a uh, different, different uh, <laughs> connotation. I score every game, but bit of pepper is my fame. All right! Really, dude? That's your thing. You're not into music, you're not into girls, you're not into horror movies, you're not into comics, you're into fucking Dr. Pepper. God, I'll tell you what's horror. Horror. What's worse is the horror horror is into those white him pants. being into that. Walking it's around like with those white pants in that shirt. Compounded. Yeah, it's that. I'm going to have to find these shirts to put on American Horrors now, Brian. I'm sorry. They love him. I'm going to have to find these much. commercials to put him on American Horrors now, Brian. <laughs> you should. You should. Hey, it's horror related. It is. I mean, it's not as like cool as like having like you know uh, Quaff and Joe all up in your uh, soda commercial, but it's 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 still horror related because as David Nolan. It's all right to be yeah, dynamite, no, it's... but to be a pepper is out of sight. Would you like to be a pepper too? Dynamite! Is he flipping them? Oh, okay. <laughs> but he was flipping the bird there. You stopped it right where there was a can in the upward motion blur, right by his middle finger. Fred Flintstone's running around now. Yeah, I'm waiting for him to whip out some smokes. <laughs> On his Princeton's where the flag was at. Oh my God! All right. No more fucking Doctor <laughs> Pepper commercials. I promise you. But I did have to fucking kind of show that shit. It's funny. Um, and the, the guy went has. from that to American Werewolf in London, and then his career really didn't go anywhere after that movie was a big hit. No. Yeah, it no, just, he just kind of fell off. It's, it's very strange how he just Weird. kind of disappeared. He did a lot of TV yeah. stuff. Yeah, he's got, he's, he's got a list of credits, but it's all uh, it's a lot of he's TV stuff. He's doing Mercedes or BMW commercials, I remember, like in the 90s or some shit popping up. Well, it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's just like sometimes actors seem to disappear, but then you'll go on IMDb and you realize, yeah. oh, they've been working all this time. They've just been in shit that I don't watch. Right, right. right? Like, yeah. I don't know, like yeah. soap operas or cop shows mm -hmm. or something. When I had Cracker, you can see two or three things that like, like um, Kuba again Jr. has been in that's like run of the mill buddy cop shit. And like, what so when they say they're working hard yeah they're working hard you just don't see it because it doesn't make it right they're still working well, these days you you got the ghetto of netflix or amazon prime because they'll push it for a little bit then it just kind of disappears into their catalog and then you can't yeah. find it anymore and if you go looking for it, you're gonna spend like 45 minutes trying to find the goddamn thing i know you gotta, you gotta you gotta wait for youtube to tell you where all the gems are tubi is a hundred times better i look I, honest to I like God, this Tubi's like the best streaming service. It is. It my is favorite. actually. But and I got to give you, it like... to Roku too. The Roku streaming also mm -hmm. is really good, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I think out of the pay services that I've experimented with, because I, I, I cut the cords last year, I wanted to see what it was like. You know what I mean? Right. And since yeah. I have, I've, I've been fine. And frankly, the thing that I've spent, got the most bang out of for my money is either Max or Paramount Plus because I watch like Ridiculousness, Jackass, Wild Boys, and that's on Paramount <laughs> Plus, you know. And I like I need a break. I need a break from the horror. So I'll, yeah, I'll oh yeah, watch yeah. The Jackass shows or Jackass yeah. Shark Week was pretty fun. Yeah, how it plays, man. I watched Always. Strange New Worlds. Don't hate me. You're I've heard that the in Hollywood, like being an actor, like it's as much of a cesspool as comics, like. You don't oh, well, worse, dude. Oh. I would yeah, imagine. even worse, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and not even just being an actor, just being just, like, anything in Hollywood. Just being down in Hollywood. Yeah, was it like getting, uh, getting screwed over in comics is a little bit different than getting screwed over in Hollywood. There's not there's enough literally money a couch, get a real couch for comics. that. There's just not enough money involved to get really fucked. My friends that run yeah. a effects business in L.A. got fucked by the production company. They had just done a big DMX video. They did the Justin Timberlake Nelly video, and I forget the third one they did, and they were owed $100,000. So the production company just bankrupted the production company, and they got stiff for a hundred k. I've heard the same thing director. about Queen, like the Queen maybe movie. Like the effects maybe, guys maybe on that never worse. got paid for that movie. Maybe, maybe it is worse than, because I was talking about that casting couch. 
<laughs> oh, oh yeah, God. it's really bad. Guys that cash oh, the couch. And I'll tell you from uh it's worse for the dudes. Uh they yeah. don't talk about yeah. the yeah. Yeah. couch, but it's a very real thing. Yeah, and yes. especially with yes. kids. I have several friends that were child actors that were molested when they were child actors, and I have lots oh. of adult friend actors that you know, male or actors all told me I won't work with this guy, I won't work with that guy. Uh, even Brian Singer from the X Men, the original X Men actor yeah. that was playing Wolverine, he left because he couldn't take all the uh, unwanted advances from the director. Who was Ooh. it? Victor was the original man to play uh, Wolverine. Wasn't that? Um, don't, tell me, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Doug Ray Scott was cast originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah Doug Ray Scott. Doug Ray yeah. Scott. He went to but Mission apparently, uh, Hugh Jackman was fine with all the extra attention. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta well, get a that, refill. It makes Hart, you think, you though, me, right? Like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah totally. sure. Hart, could you do me a solid and tell these people like about Victor Salva or something? I oh, you guys don't know too much about Victor Salva, the child rapist. Oh wow. No, okay, so they have lobby that. allegations at Disney all the time about grooming, right? So I've got a, a real easy, you want to figure out if they're grooming people? Well, there was a director, Victor De Silva, or De Salva. He was the director of Clown House. And on the set of Clown House, he drugged his 12-year-old boy lead and raped him. Uh, oh, wow. So this man was convicted. He uh, went to jail for his rapes. And at his trial, they had people like Robert Redford defending him. And then oh, when he wow. gets out of jail, Hail he Hydra. hires him to direct... <laughs> A bunch of half naked tweens in powder. So, if you've got a convicted rapist who's raping boys, why the fuck would you hire him to do powder? It's not like there's not dozens. You can't throw a rock in Hollywood without hitting a kick ass director. There's no yeah. reason to hire this gentleman unless you're part of that scene. And yeah, they has protect been their own. Caught with this kind of thing. Yeah, they protect their own. Uh, Sim was a child actor and uh told us about like he met macaulay culkin and macaulay culkin was like yeah dude like it's bad you should probably like not do this you should probably uh get out like he gave him like you know a warning uh but yeah now it's supposedly uh, uh i i imagine it's a hundred times worse than people think it is look at fucking jimmy saddle he was like a fucking uh a fucking serial rapist and killer yeah right yeah let makes Bill Cosby look like a fucking uh, a saint in well, comparison. They say and a lot of people untouchable. They say the most successful people in Hollywood either take the dick or give the dick. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, you have I, to I, think. Oh no! What are you, you know? saying? Well, no, I've heard actors like <laughs> between taking and giving. Uh, the uh, the porn actor. It's not the, good. <laughs> no, catching, catching. What? The porn the porn actor Jerry Butler, right? Who is considered like one of the better actors. Right back when, when you know, skin flicks. Were back when they really funny. gave a shit. Back when it was yeah. instead of actually yeah. giving a shit. Yeah, he's actually yes. one of the movies we play on American Horrors. I think it's called. It's not Evil Town. It's something else, like Evil, something that there's aliens. John Carradine's John Carradine is in it. Ginger Lynn uh, or Amber oh, Lynn nice. is in it. Uh, what is it this? Involves aliens. I gotta see this shit. Yeah, it's on American Horrors. I'll schedule it this weekend, guys. Oh, hell yeah. I'll watch that shit. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, he said the reason why he went into porn was because, like, you know, he was trying to get jobs in TV and this is because this is in, he was New York based and in the theater and that sort of thing. And he was just like, basically, I, I went into porn so I didn't have to suck a dick. You know what? You know what's going weird? into porn because Hollywood well, is too dirty. Well, them or they wanted to blow me. Well, now that you've seen behind the curtain, like now we see behind the curtain, right? But for yes. all those years, they were demonizing like porn actors and all that kind of stuff. Like they were like, "Oh no, you guys are dirty because you do that shit on film." But in the meantime, they're doing this stuff on a casting yes. couch. They're doing it to kids. You know what I'm yes. saying? But and they're not doing it in front of a camera. It's the fucking ridiculous. And it, it, you know, all this shit's coming out about fucking such a fucking cesspool. Yeah, it, it is. And anytime you've got money and influence, you're going to have that, guys. I mean, I was in yes. Hollywood for 22 years. And part of the reason I didn't become more successful at certain things, because I, I wouldn't do it. There's things I wouldn't do. I, I didn't allow people to be victimized in front of me. Uh, 
when we had Billie Eilish working for us as a little girl, her father was there the whole way. He was That's sitting there. Good. He was making sure his daughter's okay. He was yeah. trying to understand what's happening. And he was an actor too. You know, Patrick was an actor. His mom, uh, her mom was an actress. And so I, I really commend them for keeping an eye on their kids, you know, especially getting involved in music. Uh, Cause music is just as bad as cesspool. Right. You know, there's mm-hmm. always somebody looking for a way to victimize you. That's why you have, Pedos will go get involved with the Boy Scouts because that's that's where. The right, kids did you are. see that? Did you right. see that round that's table nice. where they had all those rappers? You know, and they were talking about their experience in the business. And one dude was like, "Not everybody here knows they had to take the dick, right?" And they were like, "No, no, we never." And he was like, "No, come on, not be honest. Like they 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 tried to fuck me. I'm sure they tried to fuck you too." <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Now all the shit's coming out about Puff Daddy, right? Turns out he was like a, a like a, a major. Uh, well, is that what Cat Williams is saying? Oh yeah, yeah, Cat Williams. Look, you got a name like Puff Daddy. I'm, I'm even handing <laughs> you a joint if you don't take well, it. Dude, <laughs> he wasn't even a rapper. He's like a kid. What, what he was he doing was, was just karaoke. He was, he was like a bad karaoke. Hey, I just want everybody to know you don't even want to know what I had to do to get a job on Six Gun Gorilla. Like, oh so, man, come on. come on, it wasn't that bad. I held you tenderly afterwards. Shut the up. videos the I had to make. Did you tickle the balls? Did you have to tickle the balls? I mean, Did you not, tickle the balls? Would they go do tickle, tickle dog? Would they go do tickle? I'm going to sleep now or wait for what? I realize I don't look so hot, David. But yeah, look how I thought you'd be glad to see me. Griffin Dunn looks here. David. Yeah, David. There's that you're hurting my feelings. Throat. Hurting your feelings? Has it occurred to you that... It might be unsettling to see you rise from the grave to visit me. Sorry to be upsetting you, David, but I had to come. How about that trachea. Oh, and just like the dangling flesh. There's that one little You're piece that's little buried someplace in New piece. York. Yeah, great. It's a great build. Your back. parents came. That's fucking. That's fuck. That's Rick Baker for you, man. In my funeral. Yeah. I was surprised at how many people came. Well, why should you be surprised? We're a very well-liked person. Yeah, I was, wasn't I? Well, I liked you. Debbie Klein cried a lot. Oh, God. Am I asleep now or what? So, so you know what she does? Yeah, so he goes over, like, the details of, like, you know, watching his own funeral and everything. And then he drops a bomb on him. He's just like, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on bed because I got killed by a werewolf. And I won't be we're free here. until the last we were werewolf is, we're- is dead. And that's you. So you need to kill yourself. I'm not listening to this. On the moors, we were attacked by a lycanthrope, a werewolf. I was murdered. An Italian-American in London. And now I walk the earth in limbo until the werewolf's curse is lifted. Is he Italian-American? That other guy, he's got to be. That guy is as Italian as it gets. I like how they use the gash to... I always figured he was... uh, I always figured he was um, uh, Jewish because of the whole, like, Yahtzee werewolf scene oh both the characters are jewish yeah yeah i have to warn you warn me we were attacked by a werewolf i'm not listening to i was murdered an unnatural death and now i walk the earth in limbo until the werewolf's curse is lifted and an unnatural death right and one of the things i always loved about the werewolf in this is i've always felt werewolves should look profoundly unnatural Mm. right that's something that when that. you look at it, it's something that's not supposed to be Way uh, far away from a dog. Here. Shut up. The wolf's bloodline must be severed. The last remaining werewolf must be destroyed. It's you, David. It's you, David. What? Please believe me. You'll kill people. Nurse! Yeah, so it's it's like at first he was almost kind of happy to see him, and now it's like this ain't even cool anymore. I need more drugs. I'm lonely. Or less. (laughs) If he's like, he thinks he's hallucinating. (laughs) Kill yourself. Now you see, this looks a hundred. Look in the high definition and everything. I'm sorry, like that fucking looks just disgusting. It looks even better than it did back in the day, y'all. Yeah, man. Nice and wet. But, but once again, we're talking about, you know, Rick, Rick, Rick Baker's Rick Baker, the goat. The yeah. goat. Hey, Rick, 
I'm just it's saying, this is this is still one of my so very funny. favorite werewolf movies. Have you ever talked to a you kill oh, others? Yeah, no, no, it's 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 one, it's it's a classic. Man. It's revered is the best. It's revered is the best. I'm sorry. It's revered as the best horror uh, werewolf movie of all time. Most, I mean, most, most people consider it the best one. There, there ain't many that I can even like put on the, on the same. It's not level. my favorite. It's probably you know it's up in my top three, but you know, right? I like Howling. I mean, I like the Wolfman than Howling to this. But. Oh yeah, no, I'm a Howling fan. I'm more of a Howling fan. Soldiers, soldiers, yeah. Soldiers, yeah. Oh, Dog Soldiers was sorry. Awesome. They put it on another right. movie like after Dog Soldiers, like the English did. And it was uh, it was awesome. There was about a train. You remember? Like it was yes, like um, howl. Yeah, howl. That's what it was. I see that. I mean, there's been a lot of good ones. This one just it well, stands the one test of time. Word yes. like W E R. It really does. It's just word. Uh, people yeah, still trying to dethrone man. this. You know. I check that out. Beware the moon for sure. Beware the um, moon. Yeah, no. I mean, it just has so many memorable moments. And what Hart said about this movie not having any fat on it right? yeah 100%. the pacing of it right that was something that because i hadn't i hadn't watched this in years because when i was a kid i watched it a thousand times right yeah me too right so then i it's even debated like, watching it again one of those the, movies the show it's like you know it, it's like certain movies i have to have co copies of whatever new medium it comes out in you know dawn of the dead mad max uh, you know, Escape from New York. There's certain movies. This isn't one of those movies, but I'm so glad I watched it again last night because I it was like visiting a, an old friend I hadn't seen. In oh yeah, for sure. Twenty that, years. Or that so. one scene in the subway where you just see him, you know, that aerial view where you just oh. see the beast coming out. For me, as an adult, that's the scariest scene. Uh, where you just see the top oh, half. It's a scary the shot of the movie. I agree. Yeah. I totally. And agree. that lit scene, the the transformation scene in his girlfriend's apartment or the nurses, the yeah. all all like hard light, man. You, the, you know. I'd I say love too for myself as a professional director now and a professional editor that's got like decades of directing under my belt and acting, and Word. dealing with special effects in the films I've shot. It's it's different for me. That's why I look at. It, I'm like, man, there's no fat on this movie. Every scene propels the story forward. Yes. Every single one. It keeps no filler. It keeps it yeah. moving. There's no bathroom break. There's Matt no bathroom break about. in this movie. You're stuck in your chair, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, exactly. The That's the thing that drives me crazy about the fact that the average running time for a movie now is two hours. Those are the short ones. Yeah. Seems like the average running time for a movie these days is two and a half hours. I don't mind it being so long as long as it's good. Fat. Yeah, yeah, they so pat them, though. They pat them, especially the TV series. Like, oh my God. Oh, to yeah, watch the new True Detective with uh, oh. Jodie Foster, and it's Foster. like, could you pad this anymore? Could you <laughs> yeah. have any more fucking padding? Can the you just in the get into the goddamn story and get the fucking story going? I don't yeah. need all this other crap. <laughs> I don't need all this other garbage. Exactly. Like, get it moving, guys. I get know, it moving. the pacing is yeah. just fucking horrible they and even oh, like yeah. so many of the movies that have come out in recent years that i love that i think are great i could still be like that's you know it's great but it could lose like 10 minutes or yeah, fi or 15 yeah. Minutes. No. chop 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 yeah, yeah. like if, and if, for me it's easy as an editor like i could mm -hmm. see it clear yes. as day as a professional editor i'm like cut this off cut this off this is no. extraneous this doesn't matter this performance isn't working get rid of this get rid of that right. i don't now, need bring to see me everything the outlaw that was already on the around but but hold on now you got to bring me everything that was on the cutting floor and let me look at that. <laughs> well, they do that. They'll yeah. do that. They will splice that shit together for like shits and giggles. The thing that Matt's saying about this scene where it's it's lit hard, the hard light, yeah, Dude, right. I love this. It's not you know, and I'm not shitting yeah. on Stan Winston at all. But one of the things yeah. I remember about the Congo was he wanted to take a shot at making apes because, like you said, Baker's the Baker's the goat. The goat. He made he made his name on apes. He was the 1976 King Kong. He wore his own stuff. That was yes. his. He was in the ape yes. costume. A bunch he, of stuff. Yeah. No, so yeah, that's when I so, asked you who is that. I couldn't tell because it was an old old picture, and I never really knew what Stan Winston looked like. Well, plus you know he was in makeup, but um, but Stan, <laughs> you know, and, and, and so what I'm saying is like 
Stan Winston wanted to take a shot at the apes. So right. for the Congo, that's what he did. Yeah. But one of the things that, and, and again, I'm not shitting on Stan Winston because that, that scene sucked because it was lit poorly. And a lot of times, like in the thing with Rob Bottin, you'll see it's like flashlights all over the place during the dog in the jail cell. I'm like, first of all, lights, I get it. Flashlights, I get it. Why are they doing this? Right. But in this scene, Matt, you got it. It's lit hard and it holds up. Totally different. Well, it would be but, it but would I mean, be lit hard totally in an apartment. You can't hide in the light of this scene, and Rick Baker doesn't have to hide. Everything he no. does can be seen from every single angle yes. in the hardest light, and it holds up. That's why he's the goat. Yeah. What I'm talking about. That's, That's why he's the MVP. No. That's why he's the goat. <laughs> Oh, no! <laughs> it just seems so real too, you know. It's like that scene in Salem's Lot when fucking uh, Orlocker, I forgot his name. He he Barlow, he just appears in the in the oh, kitchen. Oh yes, right here. He's just in the fucking living room. It's it's just like you're there with him. It's yes. so realistic and so fucking horrific, and it Probably puts you there. Over, you know. Man. Yeah, man. Uh, at the same time, which uh, transformation do I prefer? This or the one in uh and the howling? howling. The, the one howling. with the howling is just so howling. <laughs> the movie, it's everything about it. It's really fucking nightmarish. dirty, greasy, fucking. I don't know if it's. I forgot if it's L.A. or if it's um like Manhattan, uh, downtown. Oh my god, yeah. The only look gripe painful. I have about the howling is that they didn't have a lot of comedy in there. You know. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. No, there's a bunch of comedy in the it howling, is, but it's just ah, it's just different. It's kind of. It's hard comedy, you know what I'm saying? If that's a thing, yes. like it wasn't. Uh, I'll have to dry. look at the the one in the Howling. I'm not. I I kind of remember it, but I remember this one being painful, and he really seemed yes, reluctant to want to turn into the how. Oh to yeah. The werewolf. Well, in the Howling, yeah. it seems like well, this is what's happening, and it's finally here. Let's you know. Yeah. Well, the way they I always seem imagine to enjoy the it. transformation, they really seem to enjoy the, way enjoy it's the depicted, transformation. They yeah. love it. I will say in that werewolf TV series, they had some pretty neat werewolf transformations. And also in uh, the fairy tale one from uh, what's his name? Uh, director of the crying game. The and Company I think of it's wolves. called Company of Wolves. Yes, we did that. Company here. of Wolves. There's, there's some really movies. good transformations in that film. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. By uh, Christopher Tucker. Chris, somebody, I think. Right. Yeah. 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 Like yeah, the the uh, the transformations and that are great because they're all different. But it's not, you know, it's uh, goodness, man. Like you know, the the the, the wolf's uh, Stephen Ray. He opens his mouth and like the the werewolf snout comes out of his mouth. Like there's a wolf literally inside of him coming out. Wearing a person suit. Br brilliant, beautiful stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Eli uh, Roth put that off uh, for Hemlock Grove. Yeah. Yeah, I hated Hemlock Grove only because like they the werewolf changed into like an Alaskan husky. <laughs> yeah, no, well, it's got to be unnatural. It has to be something that looks like it's not supposed to be here. And this is a totally original uh, uh, werewolf design because it has sort of like the head of a dog. Yeah, it's like a dog bear wolf. There, that's scary right there. Oh fuck! This is yeah, this is the scariest moment in the movie for yeah. me. Yeah, as an adult, this this right here. It's dog bear as a wolf. kid, I remember thinking that this scene was like really menacing. Dude, as a kid, I didn't even notice the fucking bear up there or the, or, or the werewolf up there. I just didn't see it for some reason. I, I don't know why it blended. They in, don't show it. it for very long. Right. Well, it just comes into the frame. But I never yeah, even noticed saw it. it on VHS. It, it kind of uh, is it's not as exact on why. VHS. That's why, dude. That makes sense. Oh, that's interesting. That's great show. Interesting. Yeah, see, this that's, is that's, me, right? Yeah, Brian. The heart would know this theory. shit. I guess your high depth theory kind of it, it, it works a little bit. <laughs> well, depth. once again, it's a different way of watching <laughs> a fucking movie that I've seen. Yeah, 100, no, I agree. Times. I agree. I do agree with you, man. It's like it's like Dawn of the Dead in 3D. Did I ask for it? No. Did I want it? No. Yeah. Is yeah, it yeah. if it's well, playing at the, like at the theater down the street? Am I going to go see it? Fuck yes. You could really notice <laughs> yeah, the difference with something like uh, the Warriors. The Warriors, when you see it on VHS, yeah. versus the Warriors on Blu-ray, you could really see the photography oh, pop yeah. with the neon colors and, yeah. the, and the light and the way he set it up. Well, Walter Hill Warriors was being, awesome. Some of these are revelations, right? Love this like shot. Like the right Criterion here. Oh. version of Night of the Living Dead. The image uh, was the image. I think that was the the first really like taken from the original negative. 
right? Mm -hmm. That that movie always looked muddy because the the people that developed it, that did the transfer, fucked it up. And Mm -hmm. suddenly this movie that you always saw looking muddy is fucking clear as fucking day. I remember going to the Alamo to see like the, like the 4K restoration by uh, Martin Scorsese and like the Metropolitan Museum of Art and just like seeing things I never noticed before in, 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 in the frames. And that's one of those movies that's imprinted in my head like a fucking flip book, <laughs> right? I know every inch of that fucking movie. And then I'm seeing new shit. Yeah, it's I cool. the director's cool. cut of the Warriors. Do you know what the director's cut of the Warriors is? What's that? The I mean, fade the scenes show the it? actual comic book panel. I gotta head out. Oh wow, um, that's yeah, all it is. Good. All, all the scenes yeah, are Preston. the same. But me too, guys. I got all Death Metal Heroes coming on right yeah. now. Yeah, guys, I gotta oh, go did. make food for the lady. Uh, I gotta head out too. You trainers are all fucking abandoning me. No, trading me. Gotta make food for the woman. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's all good, Hart. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, Preston just fucking bounced, motherfucker. It's good to see you guys. It's, it's good, good to see you as well. And That's Matt, tell, happening, tell these Good fools times. where they can find you and where they should head when this uh, stream ends. Yeah, if you guys want, um, you can come on over to my channel. It's uh, Metal Movies and Brewskis. I'm going to have uh, Luke um, Agilito over there, also known as Death Metal Hero. He's going to be talking about you know, oh. his, his works and whatnot. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for thanks for having me on. Um, you can find mm-hmm. me on, on Twitter. Give me a follow at Rune Cutter Comics. And, um, or sorry, Rune Cutter Comic. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks again, Brian, for having me on. I really appreciate it, brother. Oh, dude, dude, you're the best. And everybody, best. Th- thanks so much for hanging out, man. And everybody, go fucking check out. We're going to wrap up in a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, but, uh, everybody, go check out that interview. And, you know, if I don't pop in to the chat or whatever, uh, uh, tell Luke I said yo. I will. I'll see you guys. Nice seeing you guys right. again. Take it easy, Matt. Peace. Backstab. <laughs> Moment. Everybody's going to have some kind of a bad time getting in the way of this. I was going to say. Shank, 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 shank. If you oh, and hard. Can watch his show tonight. You can catch it in replay on Saturday on the Madness YouTube. Yes. Yes. Because we always play it again for those of you who missed it. Yes. And speaking of traitors, Hart, tell these people how they can find you. All right, guys. Hi, I'm Hart T. Fisher from American Horrors, which is a completely free linear streaming horror television channel. That's a it's a throwback because most of the time when you go, you say, oh, it's it's channel. It's it's a dink box. And you go and it's it's not really a channel. It's a video store online. And you yeah. spend half your time doom scrolling and arguing with your girlfriend or your boyfriend trying to figure out what the fuck you're going to watch. At American Horrors, we handle that for you. We're the DJs. We do it, man. When you go to a Danzig show, Danzig doesn't give you the playlist. You don't get Danzig's playlist. You go see the Rolling Stones. You don't get a goddamn playlist. Okay, folks, what I can tell you is we had two world premieres on the network this week alone. We had the Flowers and the Razor Wire feature film premiere, and that was late Friday night. And then we had the premiere of The Most Dangerous Man in Comics, which is a mini documentary about me and my work in comic books. Uh, you could find us on Roku. Uh, Roku is uh, one of the best devices out there for watching uh, material on. I have my Roku hooked in uh, directly to my Ethernet, so I get a really great picture, a really good screen. And we just upgraded American Horrors last year. So I upgraded the streaming software. I upgraded the package, our server. So it's running really – It's it's the picture quality is better, and we're putting more and more cool movies on. And just because we talked about an American werewolf in London uh, today, I'm going to go ahead and load up the schedule for the weekend with tons of cool werewolf stuff. Nice. And you can see us online at Roku or online at www.americanhorrors.net. And definitely, folks, pick up a shirt, pick up a coffee mug. Uh, The channel's free, and this is how we keep it free. We need your support. We need your help to keep the channel rolling for free. And buying the merch really makes a difference. That's how we eat. This is what we do full time. So thanks for uh, letting me know. That's it. It's live right now. That is the American Horrors channel live right now. It looks I think it's a pisser. I think it's a. I, I, I love it. I think it's a total. That is pisser. on my TV on Roku right now. The American Horse Channel. There you yeah. go, Hart. I got you, Thanks, guys. Take care, Hart. Thank you so much for hanging Have a good out, one. man.
<laughs> Looking forward to popping in the show again next time. And Pops, uh, let's make sure we got your latest uh, promo to run on the network. Because everybody out there who's a horror fan, uh, you should know that we have independent advertising packages for indie horror creators. So let's say you've got a new movie on Tubi, but you keep getting shut down by Facebook. Keep, Facebook doesn't like you. They don't like your horror. They don't like your monster. Or maybe it's a serial killer. Or maybe it's this. And they're interfering with your ability to reach audiences. Well, the American Horrors, we've got... So many people tuned in every day. We've got between 9,500 and 10,000 people watching every day. You know, uh, they're, they're tuned in, they're watching. So your channel or your trailer or your book, we've had really good success with independent writers that have been able to market their stuff on the network. Uh, the guys at Psychotoxin Press said that, hey, Hart, when our promos went on your network starting on Thanksgiving, our sales went up 52%. That's nice. real. That's a real result. Now, I, nice. there's nothing that I, I can't guarantee that, but I can right. say that other writers and other authors and other filmmakers have had really good success with their advertising on the network. We're uncut. Uh, we got packages starting as low as 250, 450, and on. And you could have a 30 second spot, a 15 second spot, a minute and a half spot. These things are all open. And I'm handling a lot of this directly or uh, Michael Joy at Joy Horror. I oh, will yeah. get you the newest thing that I have. I've been putting something together that's going to go along with the business plan. Good. But I'll have something together this weekend for sure. Some awesome, cameras. guys. You have a great one. Keep up the horror. Peace out, Hart. Stay scared. Again, uh, I can't help it. <laughs> now, see, Hart and uses Roku, and Hart and Max are the ones that encourage me, you know, when I – got the idea they're like roku's the way to go we already got we're already in we can help you get seen it's 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 just a no-brainer to go do it this way yeah. so this is the way we're doing it you know oh, yeah. um now i might not be crowdfunding anything except maybe the server for the extra uploaded content but um i'm putting together a business plan with a partner and presenting it to investors we already have one solid investor and we're looking at it talking to a few other people um we're also going to pull together from the people in the network pull together what we can and try to get this done without even crowdfunding it, guys hell yeah man well, let's just I'm get it up good. there and get it going right let's just get it up there and get it going sounds so gonna be, man. sounds good to know, be um, you know you you know i'm down there. chef do you want to uh, tell these people where they can find you and your stuff not your stuff uh, yeah. stuff your stuff <laughs> my stuff stuff oh. the, uh i'm uh basically i'm on youtube uh kit bash federation that's right now that's the only place i am i just switched my name on x because a lot of the stuff that i was reposting has nothing to do with spaceships so i'm gonna have to redo that but uh kit bash federation at youtube Rock YouTube. Roll, dude. thanks for hanging out thanks for having me on uh you dave asked for me to slide right in here and it was like uh I haven't been back for months and I have, I've just been quiet and you guys are like, not even with the book, dude. So it was kind of nice just to slide right on. Oh, yeah. Like, no, never, happened. never. I, we, we don't get down like that. Hey, I, <laughs> no, I was no, no. Say... People are always, when I say like, you know, like in the, like in the DM group that people just like pop in when you feel no, like sorry. it, leave when you feel like it. So, yeah. I, we're, we're, um, we're, we're casual like that. I was going to say, Kit Bash, I'd be interested in talking to you about bringing your spaceship shows to our network. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you do some I, cool shit. Well, I do. They're, yeah, they're pretty cool. The whole the production part where I like have to edit everything together and speed through this and slow down for that, I'm still not sure if I'm doing the right thing. But, you know, the dry dock is still undergoing some upgrades. Hey, hey, look, I'm I'm just saying when you yeah. you know it's good, the Roku thing is going to be really easy because you're still going to be doing your YouTube thing. You're just going to title it, describe mm -hmm. it, and send it to us to upload to Roku. Okay. Right. After you yeah. do yeah. it, and you know what I mean. Yourself. It's like yeah. I'm not but trying to get anybody to stop doing you. what they do. I'm just yeah. trying to offer you another platform to get monetized where I can guarantee you you're going to get what the analytics actually say. Look, mm -hmm. I'm looking at shows in my network right now. Doc show 28 views or 19 views. The analytics and the and the homepage say two different things. And then you look somewhere else and it says something else. How do you people monetize on YouTube know they're not screwing you? Because yeah. I yeah. wouldn't be able to tell because there's three different results for what the views are on my show. 
So, well, however, whatever I have that, you know, like that I currently have, if that's something that I send to you, like from my hard drive or something, or do no, I like it's, it's just like this? Well, most people, we let them use our stream yard so we can just tap it right out of our own stream yard. And, but you know what I mean? It's like, it's just an upload. Okay. I yeah. can go take it off your YouTube channel with the YouTube downloader. No problem. You just send me what description and whatnot and title and what, and the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we send it up, but we would teach you guys as showrunners exactly how to send us exactly what we need. So it would just be a quick transfer. Boom, boom. It's up. Cause it's yeah. just file transfer programs. Really? That's all it is. You know? Uh, okay. You just, well, you know, I mean, yeah, if you're like using our studio though, then we can just download it straight out of our studio and it's not even a, you don't even have to send me anything. I can just take it right out of my stream yard. You'll see what okay. I'm saying? Like yeah. this show right here, Brian doesn't have to send me anything. I can go download it out of the stream yard because it's in our stream yard. You are welcome to have whatever I, you can get from me. Dude, cool. Including whatever you want to ask. I, I will definitely talk to you, man. You got me, you know me where I'm at on Twitter. Hit me up, bro. Yeah, okay. Uh, I then. Uh, Dave, tell these fools where they can find you. Uh, anywhere on social media where you see ID crisis or identity crisis design. Uh, you can go to my website, idcrisisdesign.com, and uh, same for the YouTube channel. It's all uh, it's I, it's all branding. That's what it is. Couldn't yeah, think man. of a good name, so that's what I thought of. That's all, guys. All good. It works. It works. And Everybody, and the same uh, invite goes to you, bro. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily have any you. like show shows. It's something I need to like work on, but. <laughs> Boy, what I could do if I didn't have an eight-hour day job. Woo. <laughs> I wish I was his next door neighbor. Yeah, man. Who yeah. man? Uh, Brian. Yes. Talk. It's all you. Oh, oh okay. Uh, yeah. Everybody, you can find me uh, uh, at Brian Chris Gow on the Twatters. You can find me on the Facebooks, Brian Chris Gow. Uh, basically, YouTube channel, obviously. Uh, smash that like button. Click the subscribe. Ring a ding ding. Knowing the bell for notifications and uh until we see you again pops you about ready for this oh hold on let me i i got i got a i got something new up in here I cue that, cue that, that shit up cue that shit up yeah hey, let me get it let me get it set up is it even you in the it, studio man. dang you it you got it and then um, we gotta figure out what we're watching what we're watching have, have you guys seen carissa's number eight yet or or chris's slaughterville yet no Slaughterville. Slaughterville 3, man. Chris Brown from Laughing Rogue, remember? Slaughterville. Got some games, got books. Oh, like, that dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slaughterville 3 is live right now on Kickstarter and nice. yeah. Indiegogo, I think. Bitchin. I think he hit both. So whichever the dog is, like. I'm sorry, guys. The dog is freaking out. I got to get him out. out, out. <laughs> We're peacing out anyway, he's, brother. He's going to be on something. I'm sorry. Take me to I apologize. Really Later like, on, bro. Well, have and uh, I'll see you in a and, couple weeks. And also, She's dude, Carissa, in. Carissa's got number eight of Worthy Chaos Redemption. Her that horror book story that yeah, that I met this girl like fourteen months ago on book one. Yeah, she just kickstarting book eight right now. Dude. Oh my god! Yeah, that's she her, her a lot. lot. Dude, her. She ain't fucking. She's doing like nothing else then. No, dude, she she goes. Um, first off. Her crowdfunding is to reimburse herself because she goes yeah. everything out of pocket up front. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, she pays her artists. Her art, her artists don't quit. Her and her writing partner don't quit. She could print out to book 11 right now. Wow. That's In 14 months, incredible. guys. But she has to, she crowdfunds. The, as soon as the campaign's over, she goes right into fulfillment, you know, because she's already got everything. She already paid for it. She's already got it. She goes That's right into do fulfillment. It. And then she goes right back into the next the next campaign. I mean, she don't. I think she took a month off for December. That was it. Yeah, and she, she just been killing, killing it. So awesome. I'm gonna play those two. I'm gonna play those two trailers as we go out. And they're both horror related, so it fucking works, right? Hell yeah, fuck yeah. yeah! All right, everybody, we'll see you next week. Until then, peace, love, and metal. <laughs> I love your. In a small town unlike any other, 
Lisa and her husband Ray were away from home for a long time. The stress of the world brought them back to their homestead to recharge. The entire family is reuniting once again for a time of faith, food, and fun. The whole town is invited. Come join Ray and his family for the feast of a lifetime. Welcome to the picnic. Slaughterville Book 3, The Cannibal Rednecks, is a 66-page, full-color story of love, loss, and family, set in the small town of Slaughterville. Look for it on your favorite crowdfunding platform.